Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. It's time once again to go back to the 90s, which not only was my childhood, but it was also the kind of decade that many folks say wasn't a very good decade for animated films that weren't made by Disney. It was a major problem for other studios at the time, with films like Beauty and the Beast and The Lion King being released. Of course, other studios were trying to compete with Disney by making their own animated films, either in theaters or straight to video. And of course, over the years, I've looked at several of these, like guilty pleasures like Jetsons the Movie and Rockadoodle, successful films like Anastasia, and of course, underrated films like Ferngully The Last Rainforest, We're Back, A Dinosaur Story, Balto, and The Iron Giant. Anyway, the movie I'll be vlogging today is another example of an underrated gem. And it's something that I've always wanted to vlog ever since my show started. Released on March 26, 1997, the movie is Cats Don't Dance. So, let's get started. A young, ambitious cat named Danny comes to Hollywood with a song in his heart, dancing moves in his feet, and a dream of becoming a movie star. When he gets there, he learns that he can get no part other than the stereotypical cat roles, with Meow being his sole line. With his friends, including a discouraged female dancer turned secretary named Sawyer, he sets out to change the situation. However, Darla Dimple, the child star, is out to ensure that the gang will never get that chance and become a threat to her career. So, what do I think of this movie? Well, I really loved it. I never saw it in theaters, though I wish I did, if this movie didn't have a lack of advertising. But, I'm glad I was able to watch it for my first time during my high school age on YouTube, Netflix, and later, finally getting my own DVD copy. But, before I get ahead of myself, let's move on to Mustang Notes. The movie was launched in 1993 as a vehicle for Michael Jackson, who would produce, star, and be a consultant in the music and choreography. Hmm. Now that would have been cool. Also, the movie would have been a hybrid of live action and CGI, but later... The film was ultimately made without Michael Jackson's involvement. In its earlier stages, the film concerned less anthropomorphic stray cats than live among the sets and studio backlots. At one point, David Shire and Richard Mulvey Jr. composed songs for the movie before they hired Randy Newman. Cats Don't Dance was the only fully animated feature produced by Turner Feature Animation. The studio was merged during the post-production into Warner Brothers Animation after the merger of Time Warner with Turner Broadcasting System in 1996. Turner Feature Animation had also produced the animated portions of The Page Master, which I already blogged last month. The film was the directorial debut of former Disney animator Mark Dendel, who I talked about while blogging The Emperor's New Groove. But five years later, he directed Chicken Little, which is said to be the very worst movie he ever directed. And you viewers will not believe what I have to say about it when I do a blog about it in the future. Also to note, Cats Don't Dance was the very first non-Disney animated film to have won the Best Animated Feature Award. Now, what do I have to say about the animation? Well, in my opinion, the animation looks really zany, which makes me think of the Looney Tunes or Animaniacs. Plus, the way Hollywood is designed is very reminiscent to Hollywood's legendary Golden Age, which was, of course, 1939. Also, there are several references to classic films from that era, like Gone with the Wind, The Wizard of Oz, and King Kong. 
Also, remember last year when I blogged Zootopia and I said that it had animal racism? Well, Cats Don't Dance has that too. But unlike Zootopia, where its racism was towards predators and prey, the racism in Cats Don't Dance is a tad similar to how colored folks were treated back in the 1930s. Now here's where we come to the music and songs. As mentioned earlier, the movie's musical numbers were written by Randy Newman, but not many people know that Gene Kelly contributed as choreographer before his death in 1996. Sadly, this film was Kelly's final film project, and it's dedicated to his memory. Anyway, the first song is Our Time Has Come, which is sung while Danny travels across the United States to Hollywood on a bus. In my opinion, the credits and several landmarks are very creative. Also, this song gets a fantastic reprise at the end of the movie when we see animal parodies of classic movie posters. Next is Danny's Arrival Song, another good song in my opinion, because it feels like the kind of song that fits the 1930s era, and it's very reminiscent of Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly. Next is Little Boat on the Sea, sung by Darla Dimple. To me, this song starts out kind of dark, but then it turns weird when all the other animals join in. But thankfully, this song stops pretty early due to Danny's ad-libbing. Next is the Animal Jam Session, which is a dance that Danny does to cheer up the other animals and remind them why they came to Hollywood. In my opinion, the most interesting part of this dance is the animation color change. You see, the other animals start out with a pale color palette, but when Denny gives them something to do, they go all brightly colored and start to have fun. Next is Big and Loud, another song sung by Darla. The first time she sings it is when she gives Danny some advice. In my opinion, this, according to Darla, leads it kind of speechless, with it being so upbeat and over the top, in an old-fashioned Hollywood style. But later, this song gets a dark, sinister, and menacing villainous reprise. Next is Tell Me Lies, sung by Sawyer. <sighs> to me, this song is very sad, and nowadays, it's sadder due to the fact that Sawyer's singing voice, Natalie Cole, passed away two years ago due to a congestive heart failure. The last song is Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now, which I believe is the absolute best song in the entire movie. My favorite part of this song is the Venice setting, which is very beautiful. Also, while the song plays, Darla does some sabotaging, which ends up backfiring in her face. She tries turning on spotlights, throwing exploding light bulbs, turning on fog machines, fishing lines, and flipping the granddaddy of all switches, which gives Danny and the gang one heck of a standing ovation. Anyway, now that we're done with Mustang notes, animation, and songs, let's move on to the characters and their voice actors. Our main character, Danny, is voiced by Scott Bakula, best known from Quantum Leap. Danny is an ambitious, optimistically naive tabby cat from Kokomo, Indiana who wishes to become a famous Hollywood star. I really like Danny because of his spirit, as well as his talent of dancing and acting, though his ad-libbing can be a tad strange. Next we have Sawyer, voiced by Jasmine Guy. Sawyer is a beautiful but disenchanted white cat Secretary of the animal agent Farley Wink, 
and Danny's love interest. Sawyer eventually supports Danny on him being a successful movie star and reciprocates his feelings towards her at the end of the movie. Next is Peebo Pudge Pudgemeyer, voiced by Matthew Harried. Pudge is a little penguin and Danny's first friend who looks up to him as a big brother. Also, this little penguin has two jobs, which are, of course, acting and selling ice. Next is the star of Little Archangel, Darla Dimple, voiced by Ashley Peldon. Best known for doing various voices in the Little Mermaid TV series, as well as being in the Lemon Sisters and the Jungle Book Mowgli story. Darla is the evil and psychotic human child star of Hollywood. She conceals her anger and sinister nature from her fans and superiors through a facade of sweetness and innocence. She is referred to as America's sweetheart lover of children and animals, though I disagree with that due to the fact that she did say that she hates animals, which could mean that she could hate Mustang boys as well. She is also an apparent parody of the late famous former child star Shirley Temple. The most devastating thing that Darla does in this movie is flood the soundstage, which later causes tons of damage to Mammoth Pictures. Next is Darla's valet, Max, voiced by director Mark Dindle. This guy obeys Darla's every command and will not hesitate to punish anyone who crosses her. He serves as the direct force that Darla physically lacks as a child. And judging by the looks of Max, I think that Max could be a gorilla. I don't know. Well, anyway, let's move on. As for the other characters, we have Tilly Hippo voiced by Kathy and Jimmy, whom I know from In Search of Dr. Seuss, Hocus Pocus, Wally, -E, and the extinct extraterrestrial alien encounter from Walt Disney World. Tilly is a happy-go-lucky hippo who tries to find the best in every situation. She is a hilarious hippo, as hinted out by her giggling and her snorting, and by how quickly she introduces a lot of people and fellow animals. Next is Wooly the Mammoth, voiced by John Bryce Davies. Best known from the Indiana Jones films and the Lord of the Rings films. He's also done voices in Aladdin and the King of Thieves and The Jungle Book 2. Wooly is an aging Indian elephant who portrays the mammoth mascot from Mammoth Pictures. He originally came to Hollywood to write and perform music where he acts as a mentor to Danny upon befriending him. Wooly is an obvious parody of MGM's mascot, Leo the Lion. as Wooly wears mammoth tusks out of marble and a wig that is placed on him with doing the mammoth pictures icon. Next is Francis Albacore, voiced by the late Betty Lou Gerson, best known as Cruella de Vil from 101 Dalmatians. Francis is a sassy, sarcastic fish who dances with Cranston Goat and always holds a cigarette holder. Cranston Goat is voiced by Hal Holbrook, who during the same year voiced in Disney's Hercules, and years later he got to voice in Planes, Fire, and Rescue. Cranston is a cranky elderly goat who surprisingly loves to dance. 
He's always seen with Francis as they always dance with each other, implying that they have feelings towards each other. And finally, we have T.W. Turtle, voiced by the late comedian Don Knotts. T.W. is a nervous and superstitious turtle who always relies on the fortunes from fortune cookies. He originally came to Hollywood hoping to be an Errol Flynn type star. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Cats Don't Dance is a truly underrated animated film. It may have a few flaws, but there aren't too bad. The characters are funny and memorable, the animation is zany, and the songs by Randy Newman are just fantastic. This movie makes a wonderful love letter to classic Hollywood and wonderful musicals from the 1930s. So, if you viewers are in the mood for something zany and heartwarming and toe tappingly catchy, look no further than this film. I give this film a rating of 97% out of 100. Well, that's it for today, everybody. Be sure to join me next Monday for something really underrated. And it's a movie that I heard has become one of the biggest bombs in Disney history. And it killed off traditional hand-drawn animation. Mustang Power. Can you feel the power?